Hey guys, it's Jacob from Living Healthy Every Day. Today I want to talk to you about the truth about vitiligo, the mechanisms in the body, the genetic factors, and how it all happens, and what you can do to reverse it effectively. So let's begin. Let's head over to the whiteboard. So vitiligo is an autoimmune disorder that affects 1-3% to of the population. And so what happens in vitiligo is that melanocytes, these cells, they become too stressed on a cellular level and begin to die. And they recruit things like the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system to essentially attack itself. And that's where the autoimmunity parts uh, comes in. And there's three parts to the cell death that we'll get into that cause it to die. So the first one is stress. We'll just talk about stress, which specifically is CRH here. Um, and we've also got ROS. Uh, and then we've got a few other things. We've got the immune system. So we'll put in mast cells. And then we also have metabolites from the gut biome. So we'll put in the gut biome. And an example of things with the gut biome are like histamine intolerance, dysbiosis. So we'll just put dysbiosis, dysbiosis and histamine intolerance. And so with mast cells, we'll put in things like interleukin 1 beta and tumor necrosis factor alpha recruit uh, interleukin 8. So we've got interleukin 8. And then we've also got interferon gamma, so I, F, N, gamma. So we've got all these things that affect the melanocytes from producing, and I'll put this in a different color so we can see it, from producing. So this can no longer produce alpha, so it's alpha. MSH, which is melanocyte stimulating hormone. And this is the stuff that pigments your skin. And so when you cannot produce MSH, you do not become tan. And if it happens to specific melanocytes in your body, like in your hand or around your lips or around your eyes, ears, wherever it is, that's when you start getting depigmentation because the cell is attacked. It can't produce this hormone. It's getting attacked by these and you get that depigmentation on your body. So what we want to do is we want to treat these underlying causes here, stress, the immune system, the gut biome, and we also want to uh, produce more MSH. So we're going to take some actions to do that. So the first action we'll take is we're going to secure our environment that we're not getting any stress. And so that means no benzenes on the skin, no lotions and things like that. Uh, we're going to decrease our exposure to toxic to a toxic environment. For the mast cells, we want to decrease. Uh, we want to stabilize our mast cells, so we can take things like luteolin, which can stabilize mast cells. Quercetin can stabilize mast cells. Vitamin C can help with that too. Um, and we want to reduce things that make mast cells degranulate. And all this is in the description below. You can see a link provided to all these where you can stabilize mast cells, you can reduce stress, you can stabilize dysbiosis and histamine intolerance, uh, and you can learn how to improve alpha MSH, uh, increase that or decrease that for some other people that have problems with that they're producing too much of it, some in uh, depression, some in chronic fatigue, and so on. Uh, and then we've also got the gut biome that we want to fix. And if you have dysbiosis, you want to treat that um, because the metabolites from that can exacerbate everything else here. And so to, to increase alpha MSH, you've got two wavelengths that are very important. You've got UVA, UVA, which increases directly alpha MSH. via contact with the skin or just by visually seeing it. 
And you've also got UVB, which increases the amount of receptors for alpha MSH. So you want the combination of both of these. And most, most treatments only focus on UVB, which isn't getting the whole picture here. We want both of those because you want this end product to repigment your skin. And so I have in the description below the products that you can use to get it, um, to get UVB. But the best way you can do this is just going out in the sun. I know it sounds hard, but some people are, are confused about what the sun actually provides us. And some people think it's, it's just vitamin D and it actually has a lot more benefits like resetting our circadian rhythm and giving us uh, hormones other than vitamin D like MSH. And so with these, we will take uh, just a few minutes and in intervals of going out in the sun to repigment our skin. So no sunscreen, no hats, let your body, and this, especially the spots that are uh, depigmented and where the melanocytes are destroyed, you want to expose to the sun. The best color I have for the sun is this red line, red one here. And I'm going to talk specifically about methylation because that is a very important topic to have under control. And so let's talk about pterin, pterins, pterins. So specifically in vitiligo, there's uh, most patients will have a deficiency in tetra hydro hydro by pterin. And this here is a powerful antioxidant that our body naturally produces and recycles. It helps uh, get rid of excess ammonia. And if there's aluminum in the body, it helps detox, uh, detoxify that. It helps with free radicals like ROS, uh, which is a big problem in vitiligo. And it's highly deficient in people who have problems with the SNP uh, A1298C. And so this SNP, this mutation of the SNP can cause a deficiency about up to 70% uh, less, from 30 to 70% less. This is also called BH4. And so if you're producing less BH4, you uh, aren't making enough, um, you aren't helping uh, quench these or quell these uh, reactive oxygen species, and you can add more stress and damage to your melanocytes. So it's good to add in BH4 if you have this SNP, the mutation of that SNP. Other than BH4, there's a few ways we want to handle stress. We've got CRH, and we've got a reactive oxygen species. So these are two things that we want to handle. And so we're going to reduce these by increasing antioxidants such as vitamin C, vitamin C, <laughs> vita C, uh, N acetylcysteine. Uh, we're also going to, which can convert into glutathione, which is powerful antioxidant, master antioxidant produced by the liver. And then for uh, CRH, we want to take things that block stress. So we want to do uh, maybe even meditative practices, uh, practices of meditation. We can also do things that lower cortisol directly. Um, curcumin is one, which is found in turmeric. So overall, we want stress reduction. Now with the excess cytokines that are produced by the mast cells, there are some natural products we can take to stabilize those mast cells. 
specifically we can take luteolin luteolin we can take quercetin Q. We stabilize the mast cells so they don't degranulate and so this is a mast cell degranulating it's got all these little balls in it just imagine it like a little ball holding tennis balls and when it degranulates it shoots uh, hundreds of molecules out, some of them being histamine, like when you get an allergic response, other than our cytokines that destroy melanocytes. So we want to stabilize these, and these are the two natural ways we can do. There's a product I like to use called Brain Gain, which I use for uh, to stabilize my mast cells. I don't have vitiligo, um, but great product, Brain Gain. Last part is we want to heal our gut biome because if you have a problem with your gut biome and it's producing bad metabolites, if it's allowing uh, activation of the immune system through the not protecting your gut lining, then you have a problem. So here's your gut lining. Imagine these are your little cells here and your bacteria hang out here just like protecting it, producing all these little things. And if you have a wave of antibiotics, it kills out some of these bacteria. You have a lot less to protect there. And so you can have foreign invaders get through these tight junctions here and attack your, uh, your system, activating your immune response. And you've got your immune response here that will produce more things back into the gut. It will produce things into the bloodstream that you've got here. And that creates a cascade response of autoimmunity and isn't good for anyone's health. So you wanna fix underlying dysbiosis. You can see that in the description below on how to do that. Uh, there's a link on many ways to do that and improve this bacteria up here, improve these tight junctions between here and regulate this area here. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're suffering from, from vitiligo or you know someone who's suffering from vitiligo, please share this video. It would really help them and I hope you understand more of the mechanism behind of how it all works. And if you like this video, like it. If you have any questions or comments, write in the comments section below. And if you have any comments you want to ask me directly, you can find me on my website livinghealthyallday.com. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on vitiligo, psoriasis, skin disorders, uh, antioxidants, tight junctions in the gut biome, things like that. So thanks guys and stay beautiful.